Another trade that was pretty shocking for a lot of people, myself included, did not see this one coming whatsoever. We have Stefan Diggs being traded to the Bills. The Vikings received a ton of draft capital in exchange for him. Alex, I'll have you go first here. What is your uh, implications with you know Diggs now being on a Bills offense that runs the ball seventh most in the NFL? Yeah, this one was shocking, and you know Bill O'Brien has to be kicking himself uh, for you know giving up DeAndre Hopkins for that package when um, Stephon Diggs got traded for a 2020 first round, fifth round, sixth round pick, and a 2021 fourth round pick, and all Bill O'Brien got was David Johnson and a round oh. two pick. So you've got to think that they're just. <laughs> incredibly disappointed with what they got as a return after seeing this Bills Vikings trade and to me this is a huge step up for Stephon Diggs I know you might not think so because Kirk Cousins is a much more accurate passer than Josh Allen a lot of people might um, think this is a bit of a hot take but I think this is huge for Stephon Diggs and to me he's now locked in wide receiver one for fantasy football next season I think he's wow. locked in as a top 12 guy just looking at what they gave up for him, they absolutely backed up the Brinks truck to get this guy. If you think they're going to bring him in and not pepper him with targets and feature him in the offense, especially knowing how much of a squeaky wheel he is, uh, like he showed in Minnesota, like there's no way that they're not going to give this guy 150 targets this season. Uh, we saw that this Bills offense, even last year, uh, can support a top wide receiver. John Brown went for over 1,000 yards, and... Stephon Diggs is, I mean, no hate to John Brown at all, but Stephon Diggs is immensely more talented uh, than John Brown is. And because he likes to talk and he likes to get the ball, I think he's going to see uh, a lot more volume than John Brown did in 2019. So for me, I think he's going to be featured. I think Josh Allen is going to continue to get more accurate as a passer. He made huge strides from his rookie season to this past season. I think that's only going to continue. Um, and, and to me, you know, Josh Allen also takes a step up. This is a true wide receiver one for him. He didn't even really have a wide receiver one last year. John Brown was solid. But when you think about like your DeAndre Hopkins, your Julio Jones, your Amari Cooper, your Keenan Allen type guys, John Brown's just not quite on that level. Now he gets that type of player in Stephon Diggs and still has John Brown as the wide receiver too. Still has Cole Beasley underneath. Still has Singletary. He can catch it out of the backfield. Still has the rushing ability. To me, this puts Josh Allen in conversation as a top five fantasy quarterback. We've talked about it a lot. I've got Lamar, Mahomes, and Kyler as my top three. And I think Dak Prescott might be four and Josh Allen's five. So I think this Bills offense is going to be awesome next season. I know they don't really they don't really get a lot of credibility for being like a super fun, exciting offense. But I think this could definitely take them over the top. Um, and, and for me, you know, I'm really excited to see what they're able to do. And, and the one big loser in this trade, I think, is John Brown. Uh, he's definitely not a guy I'm really considering next year. Maybe he's a flex type player, but there's little to no chance, I think, that he's going to go back over a thousand yards in 2020. Steph, what do you think? Um, am I off there? Do you think, you know, any of that's ridiculous hot takes, anything like that? And, and did you read this one a little bit differently? Yeah, I think there's a, a couple hot takes in there. I don't necessarily see Diggs as a wide receiver one. I could see it as a potential you know, ceiling for him, um, but I don't expect that by any means. You know, We had John Brown ending as the wide receiver 20 in PPR leagues, uh, looking at season-long stats. We had Diggs finishing as the wide receiver 24. So to me, it looks like Josh Allen now gets two John Browns in his arsenal. Now I do like the the talent and ability of Diggs over Brown. Um, is there a possibility where both of them finish as wide receiver twos? Just with how little volume there is, I, I don't think so. Uh, but then again, we did see the Vikings with Thielen and Diggs uh, both kind of finish in that one and two range. So maybe, maybe if Josh Allen takes a big step forward with his completion percentage, he's kind of in that lower end, completes about 58.8% of his passes. Uh, that's a little rough, uh, a little over 3,000 passing yards. Um, and then Josh Allen also, you know, makes uh, his, a lot of his own hay on the ground. Um, so maybe if, if we see, you know, less of Allen taking off and more of him passing the ball to Diggs, maybe there's a lot of yardage in there for Diggs to, to hit that ceiling. I'm sure Diggs will have, you know, his boom and bust games like we've seen him have his entire career. I do think there is a little bit more stability now. Um, and like you said, I, I do think John Brown does take a hit just because of the limited volume. Um, could both of them finish as twos? That's really the, the main question for me. What do you think about that? 
I don't think so. Like you said, there's just not enough volume to go around. And for some context, Stephon Diggs had 94 targets last season. John Brown had 115. So you just slide Stephon Diggs into that wide receiver one role in Buffalo, assuming the volume's about the same. And you should expect him to have about 20 more targets. Um, Two seasons ago in Minnesota, Stephon Diggs had 149 targets. So he saw 55 less targets last season. I don't think he's going to get back up to that 149 level, but because he is a true wide receiver one from a skill set perspective, like you said, I expect him to be in the 120 to 130, maybe 140 is the stretch um, target range. And with those numbers, there's no reason he shouldn't have around 1,200 yards, around 90 to 100 receptions and somewhere from eight to 10 touchdowns. So yeah, I, you know, it's tough because there is going to be a little bit of cannibalization with Stephon Diggs and John Brown. It's not like an Arizona type situation where we still think there's upside for Christian Kirk. Um, It's a situation where Diggs is going to directly uh, impact John Brown's target volume. Cole Beasley has a different role. He's in the slot, so his should stay uh, fairly constant. And then Dawson Knox is also there at the tight end. So for me, I I think Stephon Diggs really, really knocks John Brown down a peg. And John Brown should be fine from an NFL perspective, but he's just not someone I'm interested in from a fantasy football perspective. This is the first time that we've seen Diggs take over as a clear alpha for his team's offense. So all you Diggs believers, this is the time. You know, I'm sure in a dynasty league, if you want to sell Diggs really, really high, you can find that guy. Maybe in our league, it's Alex, and you can sell <laughs> Diggs to him, somebody who believes in that wide receiver one upside. I just, it, it's tough. It's tough. I could see it happening, but I see a much more likely outcome as he finishes around the 16 to 24 range, uh, just with That's the fair. limited volume, and he'll he'll have his his blow up games for sure. Uh, 